Oshkosh is upon us. Air Venture 2023. But what are the tips, tricks, and techniques for having a great time? We're going to find out on this Taking Off podcast. Hello, you guys. This is the podcast, which a podcast is audio, Christy. Did you know that? It's audio. Because on YouTube, you're not going to talk to me? I mean. (laughs) Well, the reason why is because on YouTube, I'm getting a ton of uh, comments about, oh, the video is horrible or it's out of sync or whatever. Because I'm I'm just throwing video in there as a last resort most of this hopefully you're listening on spotify itunes apple all that so but we are including a video here i i'm one of those weird people that (laughs) (laughs) sorry i'm one of those weird people that actually enjoy watching podcasts versus listening to it so i'm on team watch the podcast okay i see well today's topic is going to be air venture and you know i've only been Actually, twice is going to be my third time. So I am by no means an expert. So we need an expert. We need an expert. And I've decided I've come up with a new name for just this episode of our <laughs> of our podcast. We're calling it Hours with Flowers. Okay. Uh, our expert <laughs> is Josh Flowers. Josh is joining <laughs> us via phone. Hey, Hours with Flowers. That's a great podcast name. All I like the name. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All good ideas. <laughs> Not pa- powers power with flowers no, hours with flowers because ideally you want to listen to or in my case watch hours of podcasts with josh flowers okay well, no, i don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> all right well josh thanks for being on our taking off podcast and we're talking about air venture and all the uh, the tips and techniques and you just posted a video recently uh about like what not to do uh tell us a little bit about that video yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I appreciate you inviting me on the podcast. And I, I'm by no means, uh, I don't consider myself an expert. I think I've flown into Oshkosh six times. And okay, each time it's been expert. a little bit different. I've, I don't know. Okay, I don't like the word expert. I don't know. Um, but uh, but I, I've had a few different experiences and, and made my fair share of mistakes. So I threw this video up, uh, I guess, a couple days ago now. That was basically just the top five mistakes that I see flying into Oshkosh. Um, and if you want, I can go ahead and start listing them. I don't know yeah, if you want okay, to talk so, a little yeah, bit more so about anything else. For our tips and techniques, let's start there. For those who are flying into yeah. Air Venture, what, mm-hmm. uh, what, what would you say to those that are flying in? Is this in any particular order, like worst, or are we starting with like number five and counting up to number one, or are they just so equally I, bad? I started. I, I think they're all equally as bad. Some of them are more, you know, technique when it comes to flying the airplane, and some of them are, are on the side of, like, doing your homework and knowing the procedure, that kind of thing. They're gotcha. in no particular order. I did start with number one because I think it is the biggest and most overarching mistake that affects all realms, and that is, number one, not reading the note. I knew you were going to um, say that. Yeah, yep. yeah, well, did you already watch the video? Uh, number one is, is EAA produces this big document. I don't even know how many pages it is, but it's not, it's not a daunting document, but it is very important. I it's guess that's what 20s. I mean when I say big. It's, yeah, it's in the 20s somewhere. Which, so it's, by it's the a way, little packet. By the way, I know this is a sensitive subject for some. It is not technically the notum anymore. It is the notice. Oh, yeah, I did notice they changed the, verb, the, the verbiage on how they're um, promoting that. Yeah, so go ahead. It's that. Uh, uh, yeah. Notice of, yeah, it's a notice of procedures, basically, or, or special procedures coming into AirVenture. So number one is, is just not reading the notum. It's got procedures in there for every single scenario. Which direction are you approaching from? Which direction are you departing to? What happens if you have to do a go-around? What happens if you don't have radios? What happens if you can't go, you know, dip down to this speed? Then what do you do and that kind of stuff? I mean, it, it literally covers the bases. It co- covers every single corner. And I've um, noticed every year it's different. So even if you flew in last year, you still have to read the notice for this year because they'll change some of the, like, points and, and the procedures. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And if you have been keeping up with it every year, it's just like FAA documents or advisory circulars or or anything like that that comes out there. There is a little box on the cover that says what has changed from last year's notice. Uh, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So if you've been keeping up with it, that's great. If it's been a few years since you've done it, you need to read the whole thing. Um, so that's that's mistake number one, not reading and familiarizing yourself. With Which the one mistake number one, I do want to mention, I saw mm-hmm. a video or listened to a, a video, audio recording ATC of somebody who was flying into AirVenture 
and didn't have the notum at all and was asking oh, for boy. flight following. He was <laughs> saying, can you give me vectors? You know, all this kind of stuff all the way in. And then even on the ground. Um, so can I go park? It's, you know, it was it was really entertaining audio to listen to. Yeah, and I have heard little murmurs of that on the radio flying in. Um, actually, last year, I think it was three different airplanes within the span of like 25 minutes, and we were kind of on the outskirts of Madison. We were not talking to Madison Approach, but I was monitoring. I like to do that when I'm same. kind of near a terminal thing. area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and of course, you know, they ATC can see our tail number on their radar scope anyways because we are transmitting our, our ADSB data. So if they needed to get a hold of us for a conflict or something like that, they could say, hey, 80991, are you up on this frequency? And we're already monitoring. Yeah, so that's they did like that monitor. to me last year. No, nice. Yeah. Why okay, were, yeah. Why were you busting yeah. the uh, Delta there? No, we weren't busting oh, anything. Okay. There was an airplane <laughs> leaving the airspace that was coming our way, and they said, five on whiskey, if you're on frequency, traffic, two o'clock, you know, mm. whatever altitude. So it was actually very helpful. Yeah, that's yeah. a really good tip is it, monitoring frequencies. Okay. Yeah, even if you don't plan on talking or getting a squawk, just monitor. So that's what I was doing, and I heard, like, three separate airplanes ask for flight following into Oshkosh. Yeah. And the approach controllers were obviously, you know, getting a little frustrated. And for the unable. third time, mm-hmm. re, you know, <laughs> unable. They, they will um, literally stop giving flight following, like, around Oklahoma. Like, <laughs> well, I'm not even joking. Yeah. The center controllers, they don't mess around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they so don't, they're not uh, – they can't handle the, the throughput for sure. So that's my mistake. Number one is, is reading the note, no, not reading two. the note. Number two um, is flying in rusty. So if you haven't mm. really done any flying the rest of the year, or you haven't done a cross country since last year's Oshkosh, I mean, please get some proficiency flying in before you make the track. My um, goodness. And, and so I, rusty, I explained rusty pilots in the conga line at, going into Fisk, that's a nightmare. Hey, that's your annual it can definitely, currency right there. <laughs> yeah, and I think some people see it that way. And, and, you know, not everybody, of course, but every now and then I'll see an airplane or hear of a pilot coming in. It's just they, they're already struggling with keeping up with the airplane because they haven't flown in so long. And on top of that, you've, you're, you know, flying in a one-mile one, one mile in trail conga line, and, and you have to be right on speed, right on altitude, lots going on, and you got to pay attention that just stacks up. And if you're rusty, you're really shrinking your, your safety margin well, um, and increasing your risk and I'll say in that this, regard. A lot of like communities are actually offering like sim venture type oh, yeah, things yeah. in advance. So if you are rusty, at least go brush up on great tip on great those. Idea. Yeah. On those procedures. So that way you're prepared to go in. Exactly. Yeah, that's a really good way to do it. And I know that Sim Venture is, I think it went on maybe last weekend. I, I wasn't a part of it this year, but um, I, it's a really cool thing that happens on online networks with Fly Sim. So, yeah, it's a great way to stay proficient. And on top of that, you know, just, just fly around your, your home area and just get used to flying again if you've been out of it for a little bit. Yeah, if you're pretend, planning to make the trip. It'll, pretend the blocks yeah. are a dot on the runway, you know? like. <laughs> well, yeah, and I'll, and I'll get to that uh, here in just a second. So, <laughs> right, number so three is. Number three. Number three is cutting in line. Um, so you've got to read that notum. That comes back to number one. You've got to read that notum and understand where the VFR transitions are. And you need to listen to the ATIS. That's in the notum too. So pretty much everything points back to read the notum. Um, but if you listen to the ATIS, the controllers will inform all aircraft approaching what VFR uh, transition, what entrance point is being used based on the current traffic flow. So last year when we flew in, it was Endeavor Bridge. That was the transition mm-hmm. they were currently using, which is all the way out by Madison. Uh, wow. And we were wait, in, wait, wait. we were, yeah, we were flying the arrival for 45 minutes. We were in the conga line and that's fine. We were aware of it. And we were also, we also had plenty of fuel and we had planned for that. We also right. planned to hold. We also planned for if we have to break off and come back around and do it again. We were topped off with gas. We had four, you know, four and a half hours of fuel for a one hour flight. So um, you want to plan for that, but it, it, you need to be aware of the NOTAM, the VFR transitions, and listen to the ATIS and take note of which one is active. And, and you should already have an idea of where that is and how to execute don't it. Don't try to be sneaky because thanks to ADSB, they're calling them out. They call people out and they will call you by your tail number and make you go all the way back in line. In fact, I I felt like they were actually just making up like further transitions <laughs> for the cutters. They were I'm sending sure them not. back around. They wink, weren't wink. giving them clearances, you know. Yeah. So just right. FYI, don't be that guy. Don't do it. 
And that's, yeah, and that's what I said in the video too. The controllers are watching, and if they see you do it, they're going to make you step out of line and go all the way to the back. So don't cut in line. Um, number four is talking on the frequency. Um, one thing that really became a problem last year, at least that I witnessed during our little window that we were on the arrival, is pilots that are way out on the Fisk approach that are, you know, 90 knots, 1,800 feet, flying from Endeavor Bridge to Puckaway Lake or whatever it may be, you're pretty far from Fisk. And those controllers on their at their ground stations, they don't have transmitters that are like the ones that are used by Center or Tracon or even the ones that are in our airplanes. You know, they're probably using a, a you know a five watt or a ten watt ground based radio or something. They are talking to the airplanes that are within a one to two mile radius of them. Hmm. If you're 25 miles out and the conga line coming in and you know already monitoring Fisk, you're not going to hear that controller at all. And it gets tempting for pilots to start chit-chatting. Well, if they start chit-chatting way out there, 25, 30 miles out, you are stepping on the, the other pilot's ability to hear the controller that's right below them. Yep. The yes. pilots that are right over Fisk waiting to hear high, you know, blue high wing rock your wings, that transmission is getting stepped on by a pilot 15 miles away saying, hey, what's the Fisk ATIS frequency? You know, it's right. it, that happened a bunch last year. And the controllers even started... I don't know if they got um, Tracon to start saying something to inbound aircraft or something like that, but I think they finally got it under control a little bit. But, I mean, people were getting really agitated. Stop talking on the Fisk approach frequency. Well, you know what Of course, if you're on the arrival. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to say, you know what was interesting is we were coming in. We couldn't pick up the ATIS. We were too far out, but we were trying to get into the conga line and find out where our transition point was. Pilots would mm -hmm. actually say that we're ahead, that could hear the ATIS. They were transmitting on the ATIS frequency. Hey, for everybody, on, you know, on, this is the transition. This is the current ATIS. And that was actually helpful. But That's a good point. That is a very good point, yeah. But, yeah, talking on Absolutely. the actual, like, controller frequency, just don't Big do no, it. Big no-no. Okay. Well, and, yeah, and that can you, really get in the way. And if you read the notum, going back to number one, you – yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, all right, number five. It says that, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. So all of that leads, you know, and, and the one little thing I was going to say about number four just real quick okay. is if you're having an issue, an emergency, or bingo fuel, anything like that, first of all, be ready to divert if you're having a fuel issue. But if you have an emergency, that's the time to speak up. The, the controllers will help you and prioritize getting you on the ground or get you to turn to another airport. So we're excluding the the marginal case of an emergency here, but otherwise just chit chat. Don't do it on the frequency. Or the, Number five. Or the, or mm -hmm. the rare case of the uh, YouTube celebrity from Aviation 101 coming in that just gets greenlit from Oh my wherever. God. <laughs> yeah. he, he just gets IFR clearance yeah. in. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Number yeah. five. Uh, yeah, I wish. Um, so number five, um, leading right down to the runway. You're, you're clear to land, orange dot, whatever it is. You are not required to touch the rubber on your tires to that colored paint. And it's really important to understand that. You, the controllers <laughs> are clearing you to land on or after a dot to give you an aiming point. They're clearing one airplane to land on the far dot all the way down the runway. They're clearing another one to land on the middle dot and another one on the first dot. So everybody is kind of stacked at their aiming points, and they want the that's that's a way that they can squeeze more and more airplanes into the runway. You are not it's it's not a spot landing where you're going to be graded on on how well you put your rubber on the dot. Are it's you cool sure? You I think everybody is grading that. Oh you know well, okay. <laughs> the bystanders are grading it with right. their with their numbered cards one through ten, of course. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and we do videos and, on and that I, too. I, <laughs> right, right. right. Um, but it's just an aiming point. And the problem here is I, I see people trying to force the airplane down. Um, you know, they're a little too fast or they're going to sail right over their, their dot. So then they just they kind of like hard. get the nose down and they hit hard. And, wor you know, worse off in a tricycle gear, they hit on the nose. Or worse off in a tailwheel, they ground loop and lose control. Uh, do not force the airplane down before it's ready to, to come down. Um, you want to get slow enough, and, and this goes right back to, to just the fundamentals of landing and flying, but those fundamentals can sometimes go out the window when you are in this hectic situation, controllers talking nonstop, you have an audience, you know, watching all the planes land and stuff like that. It can get hectic, but focus on flying the airplane, focus on your energy management, and just bring the airplane to, you know, a full stall or maybe just above a stall, however you like to land, but touch the airplane down on the main wheels if it's a trike. And make sure you don't force it onto the ground. That is just an aiming point. Good. And enough. kind of tying into number two, uh, flying in rusty. 
again, go up and fly around your local area. Maybe take a little cross country for lunch, get back in the group of cross country flying if that's what you need. Go around the pattern a bunch at your home airport too. I recommend just, just beat up the pattern. Do regular landings if you don't feel super proficient with it. If you want to get fancy with it, go around a few times and start using, just like Christy said, use the captain's bars, the thousand foot markers as your dot. And just right. see how close you can get it to and practice, you know, how does your airplane perform on a power off of 180? Because sometimes they ask you to do that at Oshkosh. Make a short approach, clear to land, point straight at the green dot, whatever. Um, so really you know, what so you're get, saying get in the is, groove of that. is get proficient and current. So be current for sure, but more than currency, get proficient. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. And do your homework. Read the notum. Those are the, the most important parts. Be proficient. Read the notum. Okay. And all will be well. So those are the tips and techniques for flying into AirVenture. And um, I'll have a card up and a link in the description to Josh's video. So everybody make sure you go watch that. And then um, let's now move beyond just simply flying into Osh. Once you land, um, again, if you read the notum, the notice, you've got to put a big old sign in your um, dash on your plane that says that tells the ground workers where you would like to go and they'll send you that way but the abbreviations are all in the notice so make sure you read that make your signs before you get in the airplane yes um, yes okay. that is very very important once you're down let's talk now about tips and techniques for how to how to enjoy osh and let's first talk to the person who has never been so they're going to get directed they park the plane at you know, general aviation, you know, camping or general aviation, just transient. What, what, sh what are some, some advice you'd give? I don't know who wants to go first there. Oh um, gosh. I remember the first time I went. Yeah. Tell us about it that. It was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm here. Uh, it, I, there's just, it's very overwhelming. There's so much to see and do. The first thing that I recommend once you're on the field at Oshkosh is Go get your swag while you can before it runs out. A lot of people will go, um, they'll wait until they're, you know, halfway through the week and then they go to get their, you know, t shirt, their or consulary t shirt or their hat or whatever, only to find that they have limited amounts left. So, my right. advice to people is if you actually want that type of stuff, go get it on the first day that you're there. So that way you're not picking through scraps there at the end. Okay, so there you go. That's a good, yeah, that's a good one. One from Christy. Now, Josh? Um, I, I, kind of on the more technical side, I guess, of what you're asking. Like, you park your plane, you, you held up your sign, and you get directed to parking, and you shut your engine down. Um, first thing you got to do is secure your airplane. Don't forget to do that and all the craziness and stuff. And there's um, rules about that in the notum <laughs> or the notice. Yes. Number one. The notice says all kinds of stuff about that. Um, yeah, and then if you're camping or, or parking, whatever it is, you go register your plane or your campsite real easy. You just tell them, you know, tail number and all that kind of stuff. And they give you a little tag. You put it on your prop and then put another tag on your tent. You're good to go for the week. And then you get your wristbands, whether it's okay. will call or you already printed your stuff out and get all that situated. Once you're in, I like Christy's idea of, you know, if you if you want to say been there, done that, got the T-shirt, go get your T-shirt now. <laughs> yeah. They're going to run out of sizes and stuff like that really fast. All right. Okay. Fuel. Fuel is another thing too. Okay. Make sure make sure you get fuel early on. So that way, because I mean, it could take hours for you to get fuel once you put your request in. Because there's like, I don't know, five gazillion airplanes there and they have, they have fuel trucks, but a limited number. So you just right. want to make sure. And, and everybody leaving at the same time and you call for fuel, it may be half a day later. It could be, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I, when, exactly. Last year, I made sure that we got fuel in the Warrior fairly early on so that when we were ready to go we could just go all right good what's the fuel cost like at the field you know i don't know what it is this year i remember last year it being fairly reasonable okay it was fairly not, reasonable yeah it, because you got to so remember it wasn't movie theater coca-cola no, no 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 okay. because you got to remember it's it's you know price and quantity as well they're fueling probably mm -hmm. more airplanes than they will that week for the whole yeah. year so they're they're probably, I, I think they're bringing a discount to it. I just don't know what that is. Okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. Gosh. I'm sure somebody, somebody will promptly correct me. I think it was around 650 last year. Which for I think. full service at Oshkosh in the middle of summer, honestly, not terrible. So. Not terrible. That doesn't suck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I just did an angel flight to a class C. And even though I told him angel flight, I got billed $8.90 
a gallon. That was the Angel Flight discount. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yep. Yeah. So mm. that's what it is here in Austin. Yeah. My goodness. Well, okay. So now, um, all right. Walking around Air Venture, what are some tips? Christy? Go to the arch. Go to the arch. Go to the arch. Get your selfie. You okay. know, go go do that. My favorite thing to do at Oshkosh, actually, um, is to just grab a couple of those folding chairs, go sit out on the line, and watch the early morning arrivals. So when you say grab mm-hmm. those folding chairs, you mean there's some just laying there that you can grab? No, bring no. your folding chairs. Bring your folding chairs. And <laughs> we actually got some last year. We ordered them off Amazon because mm-hmm. they're the super compact ones that you could just carry with you in a backpack. And... Um, they're kind of cool. They're like, I little, have those too, yeah, yeah, exactly. They're like the connects, you know, like oh, can you, you send me a link. Yeah, oh, I can maybe do that. I can, yeah, I can do that. But they're, they're super, um, super efficient. You just go sit out there and just chill and watch the landing. There's it's so amusing. Just go sit out. <laughs> it is. It I is. Love no, that. Really you don't is. even need an air show. It's just the landing of 12,000 general air show, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that is. It's you go sit out there, you got a good view, the VOR. Everybody knows I love VOR. So I'm in I'm in my happy place when I'm out there. You go sit out there with a couple of friends and just like that is just my happy place, honestly. All right. Josh, what about you? I, I'll add to I'll add to that just a little bit there. It's I think the watching the flight line and airplanes coming in and landing is very special too because it's so relatable. These are airplanes that we all fly. Like here comes a Skyhawk, here comes yes. a Cherokee, you know here that comes kind of a thing. Corsair. It's not. Right. Yeah, here <laughs> yeah. comes a Corsair. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of Corsair, the the main thing that I would recommend doing when you're walking around at Oshkosh is make time to go mosey your way through and take your time through warbirds. That is something so special that we have here in the United States that really is, it's so well preserved and we have such an active warbird community in the United States. Um, It's, it's so it's, it's just special to go see these pieces of history that are still flying and that, that pilots flew into Oshkosh. So for those new people or somebody who has never been to air venture, what Josh is talking about is is there is an area there at the airport where they they rope it off and it is only for warbirds like like the F4U Corsair or the the Hellcat mm-hmm. or any of the uh, the P41s and P52s you know, but yeah all P51s. of them or all the way up to P17s well, the, yeah. yeah so the, so you want to you you and it's it's they fly these things in. They don't ship them in. No, they yeah. fly all these planes They're in. They're airworthy. They're airworthy, and you can walk by and take a look at all of them. And and there's even some people that role play and bring in the tents and stuff from World War II or Vietnam and and set that up. And and this year, uh, EAA is focusing on the Vietnam War, and so there'll be a lot of things uh, related to that. And every day they're going to have some kind of um, uh, I wouldn't call it a fireside chat, but that kind of thing with a veteran. Um, that might be really interesting. So good, good call on that tip, Josh. Absolutely. I was going to make a joke about P fifty two versus P fifty one, but now I lost it. Well, the moment, ar- the moment has passed. Well, we already got slammed for that uh, in, in our top five <laughs> airplanes from World War Two. All right. So, oh yeah. Um, your favorite, your favorite thing besides the ones you've already mentioned, your favorite activity or event or whatever at air venture is what josh let's start with you this time um it's hard to narrow it down but the first thing that popped into my head um well i guess okay let me say two things the second one is going to be kind of small like symbolic but the the camaraderie and hanging out with your friends if you're Mm -hmm. camping with your plane that is just an awesome thing to do Mm -hmm. um but you've got to fly in and camp for that and it's i recommend it to anybody and everybody and i'm really excited that we're going to do that this year um, so that's a really awesome thing. I'm, Things to I'm, do I'm like excited events. excited that you're mm-hmm. excited about camping because I'll leave that to you guys. I, I've done my <laughs> share of camping through the years. I'm done. I'll come hang out with you. I, I, absolutely. But yeah, we'll have an open campsite for sure. So I think that's a really awesome thing to do. And I'm glad we're doing, a, doing that this year. As far as events that happen on the ground. Uh, on inside the grounds uh, and and things to do in there, I think going and sitting at the ultralight field is really that fun. That is cool. Oh, really? Um, I've never cool. done that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because well, I, I mean, I there's all these the stole planes. Demo. The yeah. stole planes last year, Juan okay, was do actually that. doing yeah. the, remember the, he the was. The play-by-play. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's super fun. And then you get the, you know, the hang glider type ultralights that come in. And then, of course, the paramotor teams. 
Um, I love watching those guys. And then you get the carbon cubs and everything come in, do the stole competition and stuff. It's it, that's a cool place to hang out. Yeah. That's a lot of nice. fun. Nice. I would say mine has to be the, the night show. I was going to say that. One, oh, so I mine's stole your gone. answer. Okay. okay. Well, how about this? I'll change mine. I actually like going over to like the career center. And oh, yeah. finding a job? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's really cool. It's so fun to go watch these aspiring, you know, professional pilots go over there and they're looking for advice and mentorship. And you just see these people that have basically volunteered their time to go out there for their various airlines and companies to to spend all day talking with these people. And Envoy is one of those that is typically there in the career center. So I'll go over there and it's normally somebody that I know from the recruiting department and you know we get to chatting and talking and talking with people who are interested in coming by that's just again it's that camaraderie and that connection it's a lot of fun and then you get some like free swag that the airlines will give away oh nice yeah <laughs> so that's where you get your free swag my that's where i so get my early chains. while they still have it yeah all right and so for me night show the the night show is the best of the air show to me and uh, just phenomenal. And every year they end it just like a firework display. Well, with fireworks, but they have a grand finale that will blow your socks off, literally. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I absolutely love that. All right. So yeah, that's awesome. So oh, okay, now here's one. Here's a question um, for the experienced air venture person. What's maybe a more of a little known, rarer kind of cool thing? that you can give Christy's got her thinking cap on Josh do you have an answer right now I can't see you I I don't know if this would necessarily be for only the experienced air venture goer uh, but the seaplane base is kind of a hidden gem uh, that a lot nice. of people don't take make the effort to go over to um, you do have to have wheels to get over there or get an uber I, over there I think they have a shuttle year, but... don't they I believe... oh you're right they do they yeah. do yeah so you can jump yeah on a there's a there's actually over. a school bus I think that yeah, goes back and exactly forth. um yeah, and there there are some booths over there and some businesses, aircraft manufacturers. We need to do that uh, this over year. there. That oh, it's it's awesome and peaceful over there. Yeah. Um, and what we've done the last couple of years is we'll order you know a, a stack of pizzas and have some friends over there, and we'll just like oh, all meet nice. at the seaplane base around sunset. I like and pepperoni. there are some planes. Plane, yeah, there you go. All right, I'll, I'll wait take for your my order. text. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and it's a really cool place to hang out. So that's uh, that's something I recommend. Great, great. Okay, I, Chrissy. I would recommend the museum. There's actually a museum there on the field oh, for yeah. EAA. I've never been in. I've it. never been either. And every year, I always say I'm going to go check out the museum. And lo and behold, I because there's so much to do on the field, I wind up not getting to go to the museum. So. That's one I would recommend. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the sayings that I hear all the time, and it is absolutely true, is that you come for the planes, you stay for the people. Every year. Every exactly. year. You yes. know, I literally live like 10 minutes away from Brian, and we, you know, but we you go up there and more. we see each other more up there. Like, At Air <laughs> we make sure we go hang out with Brian, you know, and, right. and Aaron, and like we'll go track down Josh or whoever else on purpose. And we like live fairly close together. Yeah, down that's here. funny. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, Josh, uh, you've got a. You always have a pretty busy week. Um, you've got a schedule, a pretty hard schedule that that takes you through with um, meet meetups and things like that, don't you? I do. Yeah, yeah. I don't really know exactly where everything is off the top of my head. I know we're doing a Flying Eyes meetup. We're doing the the um, big meetup and. Uh, filming that q a or are you filming the q a that's yes. happening on monday it's yeah. on monday right yeah. well, okay. thanks thanks for bringing that up so <laughs> yeah, we're having go. an epic it's turned into epic youtuber meetup on monday the 24th at 2 30 p.m forum stage nine we've requested a bigger area but uh they gave us forum stage nine so we're gonna pack it out we've got um you know big huge channels like aviation 101 and Mike Patey, Jimmy from Jimmy's World, Blanco Lirio, Juan Brown will Noel be there. Phillips is gonna Noel come. Phillips yeah. will come. Mm -hmm. um, just huge. It's gonna be a, a great, great um, uh, kind of short panel. And the way, way this works for this is that we'll do a short Q&A, 15, 20 minutes. Um, I'll have all the YouTubers, there'll be about 30 of them, introduce themselves real quick and pass the mic as it were. And then we'll open it up to some Q&A. And then 
but we'll stop it after 15, 20 minutes. You think it's going to go 15 to 20 minutes? <laughs> well, I said 15 last year, and it went, yeah, a little longer than that. A little longer. And well, we love our fans. Right. And they come, like, we wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for fans, you know, supporting us. And so it's really yeah. important, I think, for us to get out there. And this is their opportunity to kind of get all of us in the same place. All of us in the same place. And then we stop the official recording. We go informal, and we just break into, you know, mill about smartly, talk to your your favorite YouTubers and all that kind of stuff. So, um, Josh, you came last year. Yeah, you came last year. It was really good. Oh, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. I'm looking forward to it again this year for sure. Yeah. All right. Very good. Well, um, for all you guys out there listening, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to, uh, meeting you at AirVenture. If you see us, you know, do come up, do say hi. Um, you know, we're, we like that. So, uh, at least, I, I know I do. Christy does. Yeah. Josh would rather you leave uh, alone, yeah. but you know. Well. Oh, whatever. Oh, no, Josh yeah, come loves on. the people. I'm kidding, everybody. <laughs> no. This is yeah. This is why I, I love going to those events too. And, it's, it's and I've, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, hey, I, you know, they come to a meet and greet and they say, hey, I saw you, you know, over here at this area yesterday, but you kind of looked busy. You were talking to somebody. I didn't want to, you know, uh, please come up and talk. Like, yeah, I, yeah. this we, is why we're here. I mean, we're you know? going to be filming at the Flying Eyes booth. You yes, know, we'll be doing quite, episodes. Of- pretty much every day except for Wednesday. Wednesday's going to be the day off. Thank you. I know. Uh, Last year, I didn't give Chrissy a day off. So. I was not. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, because um, I just wanted to go do Hudra things with my friends at Oshkosh. And, and all <laughs> I want to do is work. Yeah, exactly. So there, we've, we've got to find a happy medium. But anyway. Um, but, uh, we had tons of people that would come up and, you know, maybe they hadn't seen the channel yet, but they were intrigued. And so after we were done filming, we'd get to talk to people and yeah. it was just, we wound up making new friends and, uh, new subscribers. It was just a lot of fun. Just so it much, was. so much energy there. Okay. Well, Josh, yeah, it's awesome. Josh, thank you so much for, uh, taking some time today. I called you like yeah, 30 absolutely. minutes ago and said, Hey, you want to do this? So I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, we appreciate, I appreciate you the join, invite. joining us for hours with flowers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. So don't forget to, uh, if you would like to leave a comment, you can on on YouTube, if if you're listening on Spotify or all that stuff, there's not really much interactivity tools available. But you can go over to our YouTube channel and do that. And don't forget to visit and subscribe to Josh's Aviation 101. So, all right, guys, thank you very much, and we'll see you next time on the Taking Off Podcast. Podcast. All right, we'll see you guys.